Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we have with us veteran civil servant Mr. N.C. Saxena who has during his distinguished career influenced so many government policies. Today he will be talking to us on different issues relating to governance and administration. Welcome to India News Stream, Mr. Saxena. To begin with, uh, we would naturally like to know what difference do you see in civil services when you joined as a young IS officer and now? Well, in the last uh, 50 years, uh, some changes have certainly taken place. Earlier when I joined the service, there used to be a great deal of discipline within the service and the service was controlled by the service itself and the role of politicians was limited uh, and the service had much more uh, uh, control over the junior staff. Now what has happened is that political interference or politicization of service has taken place. Corruption has also increased and the uh, control which the seniors exercised over the juniors has become rather weak. At the same time, I would say that even in the past, uh, the service was never known for providing um, essential services to the uh, people except during, riot, during uh, riots or some natural calamity. Otherwise, if you look at those days, even getting a ration card or getting your land records changed or getting yourself registered as a poor person, all these things even then were very problematic for the people. So the service has never been people oriented. It was, it was uh, system oriented, it was procedure oriented, but not providing services to the people. And I, as I've said in my book, even in those days, a uh, customer would die would, would, uh, off because of delays. Kasht se mar. Ye tha customer ki halat. You mean to say that civil services are very much burdened because they have this additional uh, work of a sort of uh, welfare uh, state they have to take up. Though we are a bit moving away from welfare uh, of late, but still, so many other responsibilities uh, are now being performed by civil servants. Yes, in fact, uh, the, the responsibilities have certainly increased. But our system is not uh, outcome oriented. So we don't measure outcomes. We think that if we have spent money, uh, then that money has been well spent. Uh, and we never find out whether teachers are teaching or students are learning or doctors are present in their post or not. So these outcomes are not measured. That's number one. The other problem is that in the IAS, especially at the field level, especially in the states, you find that the tenure is very short with the result that there is hardly any time for even a committed or interested bureaucrat to improve the situation. So we need to have concentrate on uh, making administration outcome oriented. At the same time, we need to improve the tenure so that uh, knowledge domain also improves and senior officers and enthusiastic officers are able to provide adequate services. So that is, I think, uh, apart from that, we also need to ensure that uh, the taxation system improves because we have, if you look at the tax GDP ratio in India, it is very low. Uh, it is 17% of GDP as compared to about 40% of GDP in many other middle income countries. So we have to improve our taxation. Otherwise, we find that we would not be able to spend much on education, health, nutrition, social security. All these sectors are starved of funds. So you mean to say this is an issue of, uh, I mean, lack of monitoring of our programs. Once we put out a program and a scheme, then we, we just don't mind and it uh, we don't see that whether it is uh, performing or not, or whether it is being implemented. This is one issue. That's right. There should be a monitoring by monitoring by third party. Monitoring by third party and also monitoring by government, both. By government. Both. But unfortunately, even when if you look at the government figures, they are highly unreliable. 
uh, if you look at the nutrition or uh, uh, deficiency in uh, nutrition, malnutrition, etc., you will find that the data which comes from the field shows only 1% children as severely malnourished. Whereas the UNICEF data and NFHS data shows 17% children are severely malnourished. So therefore, this is the gap and we need to really monitor and evaluate programs both by government and also by third party so that we can compare whether the data that we are collecting on hunger, nutrition, uh, teachers' absenteeism, students' learning, uh, doctors' uh, delivery, etc., is it really valid or not. We don't measure these things. I recall I went to a school and I wrote on the blackboard 31 minus 18. Half the students could not do it. But when I asked the collector, he said, Sir, government has never asked me this. Government wants to know how many teachers appointed, how many buildings constructed, how much money spent. There is no column in my format on the performance by the students, by students learning. So therefore, this requires a systemic change. Uh, unfortunately, the present scheme, which Mr. Modi has started uh, uh, on Karma Yogis, that focuses only on improving the individual qualities, individual knowledge. It does not look at the systemic issues. Individually, we are competent, but it is the collective competence which is lacking. So this, uh, the issue of why programs and schemes are not being implemented is relating to number one to this, uh, this issue of systemic changes, as you said. But there is one more thing this issue of corruption and political corruption because sometimes there is lack of implementation and not the uh, proper monitoring because the officers or the, their bosses their political bosses they do they don't want to do because everybody is you know in, yes. indulging in some kind of corruption yes in fact as i said corruption has certainly increased uh, both in the ias and other services uh, at the same time we can also reduce corruption through Use better use of technology. Uh, today, you know, if you start putting all the information on a website, if you have, uh, you know, contactless uh, uh, delivery of services, then you can reduce corruption. You can also reduce corruption through privatizing. Uh, why, why should we have so many government banks? Why don't we privatize and reduce our losses? Because if you have government banks, then what happens is they would give loans to those who, who are favoring certain political party. So all that can be redu reduced and by, by improving governance, we can certainly reduce corruption, although it, it can only be minimized if we have very strong civil society as well as uh, uh, um, organizations which will check on politicians and whether what kind of money they are making and how they, that can be reduced. In today's situation, uh how difficult it is for an honest civil servant, uh, yeah, any IS officer, IPS officer, how, how difficult it is for an honest person to survive in the system? Well, I, I wouldn't say it is difficult. Uh, in fact, even today you find that a very large number of IS officers, they are able to, to do, deliver and without making uh, big compromises. Small compromises here and there you have to make. I mean, for instance, supposing you have two government vehicles and minister says, well, please give me one government vehicle. This kind of compromise you have to make. Otherwise, you can survive. So long as you are delivering and you are not being very difficult, you are not being a very bad boss, you can survive. And you would, today you find that officers who come to government of India as secretary education or secretary health or even cabinet secretary, they are officers generally of good reputation, who have done quite well. And I wouldn't say that uh, there is any problem. Of course, there are some officers who tend to be very difficult and they are, they are unrealistic. They have too much of uh, uh, expectation from the system. They certainly suffer and they find that they get transferred very soon and they end up being frustrated. But I, I would say even today, there are uh, good opportunities for uh, uh, good work and many people are doing it. There is one more issue regarding civil services. 
uh, that it has to be more representative of uh, the society. I mean, different advantage, disadvantaged groups and weaker sections should have more representation in it, so that it will give them more confidence. Well, in fact, in fact, you know, as you know, there is already uh, reservation in the civil services for the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, and the OBCs. And OBCs they include not only Hindu OBCs but also uh, almost all Pashmanda Muslims. So therefore. Uh, 50 to 60 percent of Muslims are also classified OBC, as OBCs. Uh, in addition, government has also introduced, as you know, from this uh, year, uh, scheme of reservation, I think 5 percent or 10 percent, I forget what, uh, for the EWS category, yeah. economically weaker section. Yes, yes. And in the result announced only about 10 days back, one found that many people have come in that category. Uh, but the problem of inequality and problem of uh, poor representation of the weaker section is more systemic uh, because the education that they get is poor, they have no access to uh, television or to smartphones, they, the teachers do, do, do not teach, the health is poor, <coughs> they are, uh, um, as a child they don't get enough food. So therefore, the malnutrition improve, increases, with, uh, which means that their cognitive skills do not improve. All these are the issues. So therefore, making any further reservation will not help so much as we have to look at these issues why in our society inequality is increasing. The, the Gini coefficient of inequality in India used to be 30 percent. It has now become 40 percent. Uh, in the last 20 years. So therefore, these are the issues that on which, unfortunately, government is not uh, given any importance. Even civil society or newspapers, social media has totally ignored uh, the increasing uh, inequality in our system, which means that access of uh, the poor to government jobs or to other such uh, uh, higher education gets very limited. Thank you so much, Mr. Sasna, for being with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.